If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hello there, welcome back to the show. You know, one of the most requested items uh, for me to build in the past year has gotta be a slider dolly. Everybody loves a slider dolly. Everybody wants a slider dolly. If you don't know what a slider dolly is, essentially it's a rail system that you lock your camera to that slides back and forth from distances of about two to four feet. They give you kind of a miniature tracking shot kind of feel. Uh, there are lots of directions uh, on how to build these all over the internet, so I was curious why people kept asking me, and they kept coming back and saying, well, we want to see what your take is. Okay, well, I went ahead and built one. I call it the trolley dolly, and we're going to look at it right now. Action. Okay, now having a dolly of any kind will give you a certain type of shots, rolling shots, which is what you're looking for. Here I'm dollying into the door as the actor approaches. Doesn't look too bad. Here I'm on the ground, kind of rolling in an angle, what looks like an angle, to ending up on an object. Uh, the next shot I'm dollying forward uh, while I'm tilted up, kind of a walking through the forest POV. This next shot is a combination shot of uh, panning uh, right to left and then dollying back for kind of a reveal. Now the next shot here is a little lateral left to right, the subject in the foreground. Again the uh, dolly is on the ground. Here we're back at the front door set, this time I'm doing another lateral move going left to right and after our little drama plays out here I go right to left. And here's a more dramatic uh, angle while I'm dollying in, tilted up at a low angle. Very dramatic. Here's another lateral move from uh, right to left. The composition makes it kind of interesting. Uh, and this next shot is uh, I'm going from low to high and kind of what it looks like a crane shot when actually it's just an extreme angle. The track's at an extreme angle. And this shot's just a simple dolly in, but it looks really, really good, I think. And finally we come back to the front door set again, this time at a canted angle while we're rolling upwards. And then we're, we roll right back down. Now dolly shots are just inherently interesting. I think they add a touch of class to what you're shooting, they make everything look more interesting. There's really no other way to duplicate these kind of shots than by having a camera on wheels. It's just that simple. It just looks different, it's got an interesting aesthetic, and uh, I like them. Now here's the rig that I'm using. This is our little trolley dolly here. Essentially it's a minimalist version of the table dolly on some miniature dolly track. The whole track is on a base which has a quick plate attached so I can put it on my tripod and then I can mount the trolley um, essentially anywhere I can uh, put a tripod. So now I can do those higher off the ground shots if I want to. Another advantage of uh, having this on a tripod is now I can tilt the track at an extreme angle and get those kind of crane or jib shots like so. Now notice this isn't quite like a real slider. In fact, essentially it's a small dolly on small dolly track. So it's a little different. That was kind of my, my take on this. Instead of using rails, I just used a mi miniature version of an actual camera dolly. Okay, so let's build one of these. Uh, first up, we've got a, a black IKEA cutting board. That's followed by some hardware here. These are quarter inch screws, about an inch and a quarter in length. They're countersunk screws, which means they're tapered near the top. You've also got some washers, lock washers, and quarter inch nuts. Next up, you've got a quick plate from your tripod, a fender washer, and a quarter inch screw along with washer and lock washer to go with it. You've got some uh, magnetic tape. This is half inch wide and 10 feet long. Now you've got some uh, one inch PVC parts. These are four elbows and some four inch scrap, two of those. Next up is some black shelving rail. This is three quarter inches wide, I believe. It's the real organized brand and it's uh, 70 inches long. This is uh, your camera mount. It's basically a three quarter inch plug, PVC plug, attached to a mini ball head, attached to a SEMA quick connect. You don't really need the quick connect here. This is just something that I've used on all my rigs so that I can move my camera between them quickly. We've got some PVC parts here, some three quarter inch tees and some inch and a half scrap. And then finally we've got our wheel assemblies. These are the exact same wheel assemblies we use in the table dolly. 
So if you wanted to, you could cannibalize your table dolly to make a trolley. If you do that, you'll save $15, and you'll just have to spend $25 on the track system. If you want to build the whole thing, it's going to cost you $40. The tools you'll need for this project are as follows. You've got an electric drill, you've got a pair of pliers, you can use a wrench too. Those are PVC ratcheting cutters on top. You've got gaffer's tape on the right, and then you've got two kinds of screwdrivers living in my multi-tool on the bottom. Now that thing in the middle is a countersink bit. You'll definitely need one of these. You can get a set of three at Harbor Freight Tools for about four bucks. You'll need a table saw, and you'll need some kind of saw that cuts metal. This is a reciprocating saw. I actually use a chop saw. You know, here are all your parts to build your trolley. Notice the wheel assemblies on top are already assembled. That's because I cannibalized them from the table dolly. And so not wanting to repeat myself, if you need to build these, uh, click on the link that should appear, and that'll take you to that section of the table dolly video, and then a link will follow that to bring you right back to the same spot. So go ahead and do that now if you need to. Okay, assembly here is pretty straightforward. You're going to take your T's, and you're going to put uh, two of the inserts in two of the tops. You're then going to connect your wheels to the remaining open ends of these T's with the inserts until you've got two wheel assemblies instead of four. Then take your wheel assemblies and plug them into the last remaining T on both ends. And then take your camera mount and plug it into the last remaining hole. And your camera trolley is done. Next up, take your shelf rail and cut it in half with your reciprocating saw or your chop saw. So now you've got two pieces of equal length. Flip them over on their back and drill out the four holes that are in the middle with your countersink bit. Now you'll know when you've uh, drilled deep enough when your countersink screws will sit in the hole and be level with the rest of the rail, like so. Next, take your shelf rail and add some gaffer's tape to all four ends. You'll have to wrap it several times, just enough so that your PVC elbows will fit snugly, but not too snug, because you're going to want to adjust your rail in these elbows later. So if you've got too much tape, uh, take some off. If not enough, add some. Okay, let's assemble our basic track here. We're going to take our PVC elbows and our one inch PVC scrap, put them together, and then we're going to insert our rails into each open end of the elbows, like this. So then you'll have a track that uh, is basically held together now instead of being loose. And you're going to eyeball it at this point to try and make it look as level and as normal as possible before we bring the trolley in to fine tune it. Because that's the only way you can really do this. So put the trolley on the track and you're going to slide it back and forth and you'll notice that uh, it's binding in certain points. And that, uh, that, that binding, that friction is telling you that you need to fix something. So this is where you can make those adjustments. Now that your trolley, uh, you're not going to change the width of that at all at this point. So slide it back and forth and where it's not working, uh, make those adjustments until the trolley slides back and forth with ease. Expand, contract, do whatever you have to do, twist the rails just to where it works uh, as smooth as possible. This is really important because once you screw your base plate to the rails, you're screwed if you didn't get this step right and you'll have to start over. So let's make your base. Take your IKEA cutting board and your table saw and trim off that rounded edge. Next you're going to set the width based on your track, the width table saw width, and then you can cut the width of the IKEA cutting board for the appropriate size. Next use your rail uh, and measure about an inch past each hole on both sides. So you'll have a little extra. And then set that length and cut away. Now you've got your base plate, you just need to drill your holes in it now. So do a crisscross based on the corners of your plate so that you'll know where the exact center is so you can uh, drill a hole for your quick plate there. Then mark the holes for all the screws that will connect to the rail. And then drill them out. You'll have five holes. So now you've got your plate, flip your track over, put your plate on it, now we're going to put some screws, these are the countersunk screws. You're going to put them through like so, and you will then add your washer, your lock washer, and your nut. 
you're going to do this four times and tighten them all up. Next add your quick plate with accompanying screw onto the bottom, flip it over, add your fender washer, add your lock washer, add your nut and tighten it down. Now your final step is to take your magnetic tape and to cut a couple pieces about 33-34 inches in length and now one side of the magnetic tape is actually adhesive and you don't want that so you're going to take some gaffer's tape about a half inch wide uh, and rip a long strip attach it to the adhesive so that it doesn't actually stick to your rail you don't want that you want it to magnetically stick but not permanently stick once that's done now you have two strips you can drop right into your rail it will stick nicely because it's magnetic but it's not stuck there so you can adjust it. You can actually see where your roller blade wheels are going to hit and adjust your tape accordingly. And now you've got a smooth track surface on the inside of your rail and your trolley dolly is complete. Now the one thing I want everyone to remember here is that unlike a rail slider, the trolley dolly is not locked down to the track. So if somebody kicks your tripod or knocks the trolley or bumps into your camera, there's a chance the whole thing might fall right out and hit the ground and you don't want that, that's bad. So please be careful, mind what you're doing, and if you're, hey, if you're going to step away from this rig, just take the trolley off of the track and put it on the ground where it's totally safe. Um, nothing's going to change and you can just put it right back when you're ready to do your shot again. Uh, this especially goes for if you uh, decide to tilt the track at an angle. Please, please don't let go of your camera when you have it on the track. If you do, gravity takes over and kablam! No more camera. So please be careful, nobody wants a busted camera, especially me. Aside from that, uh, happy tracking shots! Back to one.